what's the idea of fitness health and well being for an 84 year old a 58 year old and a 32 year old well to find an answer or multiple answers to that question i am being joined by india's first family of fitness who have come out with this book keep moving usha suman milan suman and ankita welcome on ndtv and uh, my first question what brought all three of you together for this book i think it's the idea of uh, the way we we see fitness and health it's about being active and outdoorsy all together for three of us that is uh, somewhat similar i think that's the idea that we got together to write this and of course jagannath got us together for the book and milan uh, have you inherited fitness the reason why i'm asking you your mother is here with us and uh, you know she has her own fitness regime and uh, her journey has been also full of personal insights i think what i inherited was a love of life and common sense okay and you know, uh, so uh, what it depends on uh, people's idea of what fitness is uh, today we uh, sometimes hear that fitness is all about six packs and it's about biceps and it's about having a big chest and stuff like that but to us it's not it's not that to all three of us fitness is something completely different and okay, the way so we approach it is different because of the different uh, age uh, ages that we have and the different environments that we grew up in i think uh, our journeys have been different but the destination has been the same so let me ask that question um to usha suman what is the definition of fitness for you fitness for me is being able to do whatever i want to and uh, which is uh, i mean is there some changes in your fitness uh, regime in these years or has that been consistent it doesn't have fitness regime. i don't have a regime as such i only walk every morning that is that's all i do for my fitness and you and do yoga in the evening nearly that i just started Six months ago. Okay, so yeah. Milan, if you can, uh, you know, tell us what is your typical fitness routine like for you, your mother, and your wife. <laughs> <laughs> so, so neither of us have a routine. None of us have a routine. Uh, we don't go to the gym. Uh, I don't. I've never been to the gym. Uh, my mother doesn't go to the gym. Uh, Ankita doesn't go to the gym, so we basically do whatever we feel like. My mother, as she said, she walks every day, and recently she has started uh, doing yoga for an hour every day in the evenings. Um, so it's a different uh, kinds of activity at different times, depending or depending on what we feel like. Uh, that's what we do. So the important thing is to remain active and to keep moving, and that is why the the name of the book is Keep Moving. it's less about exercise per se because exercise has this connotation of you know being something that's hard work and also that there's a routine and that it has to be a particular amount of time like a one hour or two hours it has to be in a particular space like a gym and then you may have to have a trainer and have to have gadgets and machines and things like that hmm. so we don't really go by all those things ours is more of a kind of freestyle approach uh, it stems more from understanding who we are how we are and what we want from our life and that determines what we do for our fitness okay so if it is not about machines it's about just keep moving then uh, you know it, then will you say that this is about mental health it's about ensuring that you're mentally so strong that you direct your physical movements accordingly Absolutely I think everything starts with mental health mental well-being mental discipline all the mental faculties that we are born with uh, which includes uh, prioritization includes making choices it includes focus it includes concentration we need all those things to be able to live a more fulfilling happy life where we can enjoy whatever life has to offer and uh, from that perspective you need to have a fit physical body as well 
to be enjoy everything that life has to offer. So for us, what we enjoy, what we think life is offering is is nature. You know, we all like to walk outside, we like to hike, we like to trek, we like to run, we like to climb mountains, we like to swim in the sea, and we feel that nothing should be nothing should stop us and age should be the least of it. Okay, so it's almost like uh, beating age. Uh, Usha Suman, if I may ask that question, uh, you know, what is your philosophy of life and regime and also uh, this entire idea of keeping it going, keeping it moving? Well, uh, I don't have a regime, as I said, and I don't need any machines. I think walking is the simplest thing that you can do. Everybody walks and walking for a, say, a particular distance and keeping it consistent. Do it every day and you will achieve fitness. That is my philosophy. I don't have to do anything else. But how do you stay motivated to continue to walk every day? <laughs> uh, that I want to do it. That is my motivation. Hmm. I want to stay fit. That is my motivation. And you want to beat age. That is also your mot motivation. Well, no, age, I don't think about the age at all, really, truly speaking. Hmm. It's, uh, I mean, mentally I'm not 85. Mentally I may be 35. So I, I don't have to beat age. And I keep my body fit so that my mental age and my physical age won't differ too much. Okay, tell me about uh, nutrition, food habits. How are you managing those spaces? And how much that is, is that li linked to fitness? Yeah, that's a good question. Because uh, traditionally, whatever we ate and uh, our ancestors, they were always fit. And so we stick to our traditional diet. That is what I do. Melinda and uh, Ankita, how much is fitness linked to your food habits and what you eat and what you don't? Um, for me, I, I think it is about, uh, I would say, mental health. Um, so it's, it's not just about how it's making me feel right now, but how it's going to make me feel after three hours, four hours. Am I going to be happy? Um, after digesting the food, um, all of that I think uh, comes into play when I uh, choose to eat something. But of course there are foods which would not um, actually agree with you, but because of your childhood memories, you might want to eat that. So once in a while in moderation, I think everything is fine. Okay, Milind, what about you? So um, I think it's, it's, uh, everything is interlinked. Uh, it's it's a lifestyle like we've been hearing. It's about uh, uh, you know choosing, making the right choices at every moment, and understanding what is good for you and what you need, so that your mind and body function to the best level. And that is something that you get only through experience. Uh, it is not something that you get from listening to other people, even if they're experts or coaches or trainers. It is something that you get only when you experience something yourself and spend enough time with yourself so you understand how that's affecting you. So whether it's activity, whether it's food, whether it's environment, whether it's relationships, whether it's media, uh, whatever it might be, uh, to understand the experience and how that experience is affecting you and whether that is being uh, a good, uh, I think, uh, something good for the direction that you want to move in, understanding that is very important. So in fact, this book is not about telling you what to do in terms of there are no recipes or don't do this or do that. It's basically about understanding that you need to introspect. You need to spend time with yourself, even if it's like one minute a day or five minutes a day, to just get to know yourself better mentally, physically, emotionally, to understand what are the best choices you can make for yourself at every moment. You know, there's a very interesting... Uh you know, on page 100, uh, page 100, you both Usha and uh, Ankita speak about the thing about Milind. And, and they talk about how you love eating khichdi and uh, you can eat it every day without creating a fuss. But if there is something else, even that is acceptable. So when was the last time you ate something other than khichdi? 
all the time. So basically, when I travel, and when we travel, we never eat Indian food outside uh, India. We love to experiment with food, right from insects to any kind of cuisine, uh, depending on where we are. Uh, so when I'm at home, my preference is for khichdi, which I eat every day. And that also keeps changing because the vegetables that we put in the khichdi are local and seasonal. So the taste changes all the time. But that is one of my favorite uh, and staple uh, foods that I eat. But I eat everything else. I mean, whatever people might consider as not, not healthy or junk or anything. If I feel like eating it, I eat it. I don't have any kind of cheat meals or anything like that. I eat everything that I feel like eating. It's just important for me to know when, how much, and how to eat that food. Okay, so, uh, Usha Suman, I need to ask you this question because you talk about chocolate and sweets. Uh, you know, in this book, there is lots being talked about in terms of how much sweet you should eat and everything. So, you know, you, in a way, break all the myths that are around food habits. You have your own philosophy. And uh, three of you are, are fitness freaks in different ways and have set those own unique journeys. Help us understand when is the right time to have chocolate or not to have chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> there is no time for it. If you feel like it, eat it, but eat in moderation. That is all. You can eat it anytime. But not eat it every uh, just day. before sleep. Huh? Eat yes, it every, every day. day. Yeah. But not at night, you know. At night you should have something light. Don't overeat at night. But during the day you can eat anything, anytime. And what about this entire logic and philosophy around intermittent fasting, which has almost like become a fad these days. Everybody seems to be doing that. <clears throat> we don't. But, uh, I mean... <laughs> Yes, uh, it's see, I eat when I'm hungry. And yeah. usually if you eat uh, in the morning and there are about four hours later, you are bound to feel hungry. So lunch, uh, you eat lunch. Hmm. and uh, But I don't snack. Like that, uh, you know, intermittent fa fasting means what? You eat uh, at a particular time and then hmm. don't eat anything at all. So if you have eaten enough, and if you don't have too much activity, you won't feel hungry either. So okay. you can eat whenever you are hungry. Eat when you are hungry and don't eat otherwise. Um, yeah. We snack a lot. <laughs> yeah, I don't snack. You don't she snack. She doesn't snack, but we snack. Huh. And I what don't. does what do you snack? We snack whatever we feel like. But again, the important thing, again, like my mother said, moderation. Moderation is definitely the key. In fact, we all know what is good for us and what is bad for us in general. There are also specifics, like specifically you might have some kind of allergy or you may not be able to digest some food very, very comfortably. So that is a very individual question. But eating in moderation in every culture has been mentioned that that is the key to living a healthier life when it comes to food, that do not fill your stomach. Hmm. Eat in moderation. And any kind of food that you eat, eat it in moderation. Do not overeat any other kind, any particular kind of food. So eat a variety of food because that is the way human beings are evolved, to eat a variety of food so that we can get all the nutrients that we need and also eat in moderation. So thank you so much, Milan Soman, Usha Soman and Ankita. Uh, continue to inspire us and continue to push the boundaries uh, for yourself and for everyone. So thank you so much and thank you uh, for writing this book. It, this will certainly prove to be uh, a, a guide of sorts for many people who will be reading this. So thank you so much for speaking to Editing.